What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to see that daily Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell as well if you want to get notified every single time I upload a brand new video. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about some Baltimore Ravens news because the Ravens have recently tried out three players at the, at the defensive back position uh, that I'm assuming is going to be getting ready for preseason and just, you know, training camp bodies. Because we already know Lamar's sitting out, Justin Houston's sitting out, Mark Andrews is sitting out, but those won't be the only players. You know, we're, we probably, I don't expect to see Marlon Humphrey in the first preseason game. And Joshua and I will be recording our, our preseason preview tomorrow. So we'll be talking about players to watch and all that stuff, you know, battles and everything. That all stuff will all be covered then. But I just wanted to kind of talk about these three players and, and maybe what they potentially bring to the Ravens, all right? Because the Ravens, they do need depth at cornerback. And you may be saying, oh, but the Ravens have all these players. They've got Demarion Williams, a.k.a. Pepe. they got Jalen Armour Davis, Marlon, Marcus, you know, Kyle Fuller. They have uh, Marcus Peters. And I will tell you, that does not matter. Because cornerback depth has been a problem for the Ravens every year. That, like, that's it. Like, every year, that's a problem. So having depth is always a good thing, especially at the cornerback spot. Remember last year, last season, the Ravens went out and they were like, you know, we got we got good cornerback depth. We can trade away one of these guys because they're not going to make the team. So they trade away their rookie, uh, I believe, fifth-round pick in Sean Wade. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, no. Marcus Peters out for the year. And then Chris Westry got hurt. And then Marlon got hurt. Everyone kept getting hurt. And it was like, oh, man, should have kept that depth. Cornerback depth is necessary. So first off, I'm going to talk about Ken Crawley, who they brought in. Ken Crawley um, has been an outside cornerback, you know, throughout his career playing in New Orleans. He played in Miami for like four games. Um, and then he went back to New Orleans. Uh, but overall, you know, he's been a player that's, you know, just kind of been a body out there. He's not been a shutdown. Um, you know, I think he's had some good seasons. He's a name that, you know, you hear every once in a while. So it's not like somewhere you're like, oh my gosh, you can't put him out on the field. Um, in terms of like PFF grades, you know, last season he was pretty bad. Four targets, three receptions allowed, three tackles. Had a PFF grade of 35.6. Um, the year before that, uh, had a PFF grade of 84. Uh, one interception, one target, no receptions allowed. Now, at the same time, I cannot say how many times he was out there on the field. So, you know, there's a chance he wasn't playing very much. Um, and, you know, that could affect it. Uh, 2019, 55.7, 10 targets, 7 receptions allowed. Like I said, like, you know, he's got good size. He's six foot one. Um, he's a veteran, and he's depth. Um, that all of these players, they're here for depth. But having a big outside cornerback for the preseason could be valuable because, let's be honest, we want to win. We want to win. So when he's out there in the fourth quarter, or maybe he comes in in the third quarter, we're trying to win. So it would be better having him than having someone that has no chance of making the team. And it's also good in case we have an injury later on in the year. Any of these players, not just Ken Crawley specifically, the Ravens can call them back and be like, "Hey, um, we, you know, would you would you like to sign with us?" Because there's a chance that none of these players that the Ravens, you know, tried out today, sign with the Ravens or anything like that. But if the Ravens tried them out and they're like, "Okay, we know what's out there. We know the market. We know who we like," they can call them if they, you know, have an injury or something like that where they need somebody. Um, but after Ken Crawley, uh, the Ravens tried out Daryl Roberts and Daryl Worley. I'll talk about Daryl Roberts first. Uh, Daryl Roberts, I'm going to pull up his PFF grade right now. Um, Daryl Roberts, another defensive back, obviously. Um, cornerback, six feet tall. Last season, 14 targets, six receptions allowed, six tackles. Uh, PFF grade of... Uh, 62. He's been in the league since 2015. He's played for, you know, a, a couple of different teams. Um, like, he's been a consistent round 50 um, PFF grade. And I'm not a huge supporter of PFF grades, but it's just kind of something where you can quickly look at it and be like, all right, this is what we're getting. 
out of this player. All right, so it's something to just be able to recognize. In terms of just overall stats, um, throughout his career, he has four interceptions. He had actually an interception in four consecutive years from 2017 to 2020. Um, and then the last year he played was 2021, um, where he played six games, didn't really have any stats outside of um, about six tackles. So, you know, again, this is a player that has NFL experience, okay? He's had seasons where he's been like a decent pass defender. You know, he had five plus passes defended in each of his first five seasons in the NFL. Like he's been out on the field. He's 31 years old. He's got good size. He can play on the outside. Um, that's what the Ravens need right now. So, you know, again, it may sound like I'm not like super excited about this um, or any of these players. It's not that I'm not excited. It's just that what we brought them in for was to be depth. And so I'm just providing that analysis of, hey, they've been in the league. They can do it. This is what they can potentially be. I'm not expecting any of these players to turn into pro bowlers or all pros or anything like that. If they signed with the Ravens and it did happen, I wouldn't be against it. Uh, but then the final player was Daryl Worley. Um, and Daryl Worley, again, another defensive back, came into the league in 2016. Six foot one, good size. He's played for a lot of different teams. Um, I believe it looks like seven teams he's played for. Uh, but he played with the Ravens last year. Um, or in 2021, I think that I think that was last year. Played one game for the Ravens. Um, so like he's he's one of those guys where like you okay you know okay he was with us. And so them bringing him back for a tryout shows that they liked what they saw out of him. And again, liking what you saw doesn't mean Pro Bowl or it means hey he can provide some value. Maybe it's mentorship. Maybe it's just being a, a you know a a special teams player, whatever it is, the Ravens saw something in Daryl Worley. And, you know, in each of his first five, four years, sorry, in the NFL, he had an interception. You know, he played in a lot of games. He started a lot of games. He had a good amount of passes defended. And so, like, he came into the league and he was he was a decent player uh, when he started out in Carolina and transferred over to Oakland in a trade. That's the guy that the Ravens are trying to bring back, okay? Okay. He's 27 years old. That's a major benefit because he's still a little, he's still young enough to potentially be able to like not decline right away. Um, so he's still in kind of the prime athletic, you know, stage of his life. So that's something where like you can look at it, you know, and be upset that the Ravens brought in Daryl Worley, or you can be like, hey, the Ravens like what they saw. They brought him in, and they're gonna try and get him to uh, do some more things. Now last year. Um, last year's a difficult situation. Like his PFF grade's terrible, but you wouldn't expect it to be good because you're not expecting him to try and go out there and be your number one corner or be your number two cornerback. That's not what the Ravens are trying to get. They're trying to say, okay, if we go into nickel or dime defense um, and we really need someone out there, we can put Daryl Worley out there because he's got good size and he's got experience and he can and he can track the ball. Is he going to go out there and lock up a number one wide receiver, Jamar Chase, all day every day? No, he is not. But can he go out there in certain third down situations and be a zone cornerback or blitz off the edge? I think he can do that. So I, I think Daryl Worley has the best chance of getting signed by the Ravens. The real question is, why do the Ravens bring in defensive backs? Why, why are we hearing more about defensive backs and less about edge rushers? That's the big question that I kind of have. That's the thing that I'm focusing in on. Why haven't they brought in, I feel like uh, the guy from the NBA, I can't remember, Wind, Brian Windhorst, and he's like, why Why are they doing this? Um, why are the Ravens not trying out DNs? They have like three on the roster. At least that'll be ready to go for week one. Something interesting to keep an eye out on, I just want to make this kind of update video tomorrow. Joshua and I will be recording our podcast. Should be a lot of fun. But thank you everybody for watching. Subscribe for Daily Ravens content. And I'll see all of you again tomorrow.